I knew this was going to happen. I didn't get lucky. I didn't just guess that this was gonna be a good morning. I knew it was gonna be a banger. I analyzed 500,000 deer harvest, 10 years worth of data, and built a model that predicts harvest data with 70% accuracy. And here's what I noticed. November 9th, on one year, I see 20 deer. I'm covered up with rutting activity. November 9th, the next year, same location, I see one doe. Same week, same day, similar conditions, completely different results. Most hunters would chalk this up to luck or say that the rut's unpredictable. But as a father of three with a full-time job, I don't get that many days per season where I can actually hunt. So when you get those 10 days, you can't really afford to pick randomly. So I had a different question. What if it's not actually unpredictable? What if there's a pattern and we're just not seeing it? And here I am, early November 2025, looking at the forecast for the next 14 days. There's not really any cold days except these first couple days in November. And I'm like, when is the absolute best day to hunt? When should I take time away from my family and maximize my chances in the woods? I've spent two decades in engineering, saving companies millions of dollars through statistical analysis. And I figured I could probably use the same approach here. So I went to the Illinois Department of Natural Resource website and downloaded their public harvest data, looking at 10 years worth of records and over 500,000 individual deer killed with a bow during October and November. And for each one, I pulled the weather conditions for that day, the temperature, the wind speed, the barometric pressure, pressure rising, the pressure falling, temperature change, moon phase, lunar day, all of it. Then I built a statistical model to see if any and what potentially mattered. And I'm gonna walk you through each of those. First is the rut timing. The second is the moon impact on the rut. The third is the weather impact. Fourth, I'm gonna bring you your 14-day Illinois hunting forecast for 2025. And fifth, I'm gonna explain how to apply this to other states nearby. If you wanna jump straight to the forecast, you can see the times in the comments down below and jump right to it. And what I found changed when I hunt. And the first thing I wanted to see in the data is can you actually see the lull of the rut in statewide data? We've all had those days in the rut. There's activity insane one day and the next day, it's nearly a ghost town. And uh, right near the peak of the rut, the weather's good and absolutely nothing moves. And that is what I wanted to investigate. Because if you hunt one property, you will notice this, this weird period where everything goes quiet. But would that data show up across the state level, across 500,000 harvests? So I plotted all 10 years of data, and here's what came out. There's no lull. There's a gradual climb from the middle of October all the way to the peak, and it peaks on November 11th, and then it drops back off. Now that peak date was interesting to me because most people would say November 8th is the day, but the data says November 11th. So that's the aggregate data over 10 years, but here's where it gets messy. If you look at individual years, they don't follow this clean pattern. Some years have sharp spikes, some years it's one year. You will notice that Saturdays and Sundays are significantly higher. All the individual years are all over the place. So now I'm looking at this thinking, okay, we know from biologists that does come into estrus at roughly the same time every year. We know that because fawns drop at the same time. So breeding is happening at this time. But harvest numbers, which is a good proximity for deer movement, vary widely from day to day and year to year. We see that as hunters, which means breeding times and movement intensity aren't necessarily the same thing. Yes, the rut does cause more movement. So if the rut timing is consistent, but the movement isn't, then there has to be something else controlling the day-to-day -day variation. And that's what I needed to figure out. First off, looking at the moon. Everyone has a moon phase theory. Some people swear by the new moon. Some say the full moon is the only time to hunt. Some people have entire apps dedicated to overhead and underfoot feeding times. So I tested it. I looked at all 10 years to see if any specific lunar day or a moon phase correlated to higher harvest numbers during the rut. And nothing jumps out. No lunar day consistency showing higher activity, no moon phase alignment, the p-value, 
was 0 0.277 for you statistical gurus, which means it's just noise. It doesn't apply. Now, this doesn't mean the moon does not affect when the deer move during the day. It means individual days as a whole are not more productive based on the moon phase. You don't get an increase in total harvest on a full moon versus a new moon. I also need to throw in a caveat, this is Midwest data. I've seen research, even some of my own data, suggesting that the moon has more impact on southern deer movement like South Carolina and Georgia and Alabama than it does in, in Illinois. But for Illinois, during the rut, the data doesn't support the moon phase making certain days better than others. So if the moon phase doesn't explain the day-to-day -day variation, what does? And so I tested everything, low temperature, high temperature, wind speed, wind gust, barometric pressure, humidity, cloud cover, precipitation, cold fronts, pressure changes over 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, temperature swings day by day, temperature swings over 48 hours. I even tested whether the pressure was rising or falling. I threw all of that into the model, and here's what came out. Two impacts, low temperature and the wind speed were the two variables that showed up as statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0.001. For those not in statistics, that means the outcome, deer movement, is highly related to the change in temperature. So when the temperature drops, more deer move. Everything else was either not significant or borderline at best. Temperature dominated and was two and a half times more impactful than wind speed. Now let me show you what that actually means in practical terms. The coefficient for a temperature change is negative 1.39. And what that tells you is that for every one degree Fahrenheit that the temperature drops, you get a 1.4% increase in the deer activity. If you have a 40 degree morning versus a 55 degree morning, that's a 15 degree difference. That's a 21 point swing. So that cold morning could literally be the difference between an average day and an excellent day, just from temperature. Now this makes sense. Deer conserve energy when it's warm. They bed more, move less. When it's cold, they need to eat more to maintain their body temperature. So they're on their feet longer, moving more. And during the rut, when bucks are already moving because of breeding behavior, cold amplifies that and wind speed matters too. So calm days are better than windy days. And when I tested all the other variables, pressure, humidity, cloud cover, cold fronts, precipitation, none of them showed statistical significance. Temperature and wind, those are the two weather factors that mattered most. Now combine those two weather factors with the rut timing, which translate to a 70% prediction accuracy when I tested it on years the model had never seen. So here's what that means for you. So I pulled the current 14-day forecast for Chestnut, Illinois. Why Chestnut? Because it's pretty much in the geographic center of the state, north to south and east to west. Obviously, if you're hunting in Pike County or you're hunting in Shawnee, your weather is going to be different. But Chestnut gives us a good baseline for the state. And here's how the model works. It takes three inputs, the date, the forecasted low, and the wind speed. And it calculates what I call a deer activity index. Now with 100 being average, but here's what that actually means. The model already accounts for the day of the week. Saturdays always have higher harvest numbers just because more people are hunting on Saturdays and Sundays too. The model knows that. So 100 doesn't just mean it's average for any Saturday. It means average for a Saturday. Essentially, we are asking, will more deer be killed on this Saturday, November 9th, compared to what's normal for a Saturday on November 9th across all of the years of data? 110 is good. 120 is excellent. Based on the current weather forecast, here are your days ranked from best to worst. November 9th is your best day with an activity index of 120. That's an excellent day. You might want to take that day off of work. November 6th is second. And just below that is November 10th. All of those are going to be excellent days. Now let's jump down and look at the bottom of the list. This doesn't mean that you won't have deer movement. It's just going to be significantly lower here. November 5th has an index of 91, well below average, the worst day. November 7th has an index of 98, just below average. November 1st is just over average at 104. 
and here we will look at the rest of the days, and you will see that November 2nd, 12th, 13th are all really good days. Now, one really important caveat here. This is based off of the current forecast, and as we know, weather forecasts change, so the temperature could be colder. Right now, I'm gonna be there November 2nd and November 6th, and we'll see how the weather progresses and looks as the days get closer, because I've only got so many days to be in the woods. And yes, it's an internal struggle on November 7th, where the ruts should be peaking, but the lows aren't so great. So, you're here because you like the details. Hit that subscribe button. Thousands of people did it on the last video. It helps me out tremendously and it helps out the algorithm within YouTube. Drop a comment down below of how your season went and what you think about this forecast. And I got some of my own hesitations, but I wanted to share this model with you. Now, this model was built on Illinois data. Illinois is the only state that publishes day-by-day -day harvest data going back for years. But the rut timing shifts depending on where you are. Further north, it may peak earlier. Further south, it's going to peak a little later. So what I did was I ran the same Illinois weather through the model. I shifted the rut timing curve forward by three days and back by three days. So each scenario would have a peak at November 8th. That would be an earlier peak for further north. And then another peak at November 14th, which would be a little further south. Same weather, I know it's not gonna be perfect, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what that kind of would look like. And here on this side, you can see if the peak was on November 8th, how that would lay out. And on this side, you can see if the peak was November 14th, and you can plan and make the decisions and adjust how you and when you're gonna hunt and what works best for you and your family. Which day that is depends on where your rut actually peaks. Now, I'm not saying Wisconsin has the same weather as Illinois, but what this shows is how sensitive the predictions are to that timing. A three-day shift when your rut peak hits can adjust your intensity significantly. So if you're in another state, look at your local forecast, find those coldest mornings with calm wind during that peak window of the rut. I hope this helps some of you out. See you next time. Thanks.